lives. Let me just go through for the audience. Here are the options. Second degree murder, which would mean that Chauvin caused Floyd's death while committing a felony, meaning he was committing an assault on him and then uh, caused his death. Third degree murder. Chauvin caused Floyd's death through a dangerous act without regard to human life. And he just had indifference to human life. He'd get 25 years for that. And then there's second degree manslaughter, which is a 10 year potential sentence, meaning he was just negligent. He took unreasonable risks with his life. Um, and I wonder if you if you can see in any of those uh, charges the possibility that the prosecution sort of nailed one of them. It's really hard to talk about the prosecution nailing a case because prosecutors look at the evidence and how it comes in. But of course, the decision is made by a jury. And in this case, we haven't even been able to see the jury and watch their reactions. So I'm yeah. confessing to the limits of my crystal ball joy. But that yeah. said, I think the prosecu prosecution has put in significant evidence that would support a jury verdict for any of these uh, charges if an appellate court were, were reviewing it. A court would not look at a conviction and say, no, there's not enough evidence. Evidence is insufficient. So we're going to reverse. The question really here is, how will the jury view this evidence? Yeah. And let me ask both of you on this the, the question, because, I, you know, I, I've talked to folks who say that they that they could see, particularly if this just goes on and on and on a compromise verdict. Like, let's say the jury decides to compromise because you have one or two people who don't want to convict on second degree. They do like second degree manslaughter or third degree murder. And then that happens and then it goes on appeal. A, a couple of issues. First, Paul, and then Joyce. One of them, the fact that so many police officers testified against Chauvin, which I've never seen before. I don't know if you've ever seen it before, Paul. But they have this exhibit, which we're going to put up on screen, that shows all these other officers testifying against Chauvin, whereas he didn't have a bunch of officers coming and testifying for him. That's one issue. And then the second thing is that the defense tried to bring up Congresswoman Maxine Waters, who has nothing to do with this case, other than that she, like everyone else, is watching it and traumatized by it, I think, with all the rest of us, and said, if there's... He said sort of the obvious. If if he walks on something like this, you know, there's going to be more protest. People are going to become really depressed and dejected because if you can't convict on this set of evidence, what can you convict on? You know, and now the defense wants to try to say that that could be an issue in appeal. I want both of you to, to weigh in on that. Paul first and then Joyce. The judge went overboard on the Maxine Waters issue in his rhetoric, but not in his legal ruling. So, yes, Judge Cahill can slap a gag order on the prosecution and the defense, but not the whole country, not Maxine Waters. The jurors have been instructed to avoid news about the trial. And so the judge correctly denied the defense request for a mistrial. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. You should know that you can follow today's top stories and breaking news and catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.